Hi everybody, AZ Badfish here. Welcome back to my single player world in the Direwolf 20 mod pack. Uh, in the last episode, we built this monstrosity and um, it's having some issues. It's having some issues as I expected it would, as I'm sure most of you guys probably already knew about. <laughs> So to start with, um, this whole thing, obviously, I only had a 3x3 three three wheat farm to start with, and that clearly was not enough to make the cow part of this run fast enough um, to produce enough uh, power, basically. So as we can see, I've got plenty of babies, but they are growing up very slowly because there's not enough wheat to both breed the cows and grow the babies, because this thing takes a ton of wheat. So I've been trying to think, you know, there's got to be a way that I can make wheat grow faster, right? The other problem is um, that some of these machines, and I mentioned this in the last episode, some of these machines do not use power when they're idle. For example, the animal feeder, the mob crusher, the two uh, animal baby separators, they don't use power when they're idle. So they are allowed to basically just sit here and fill up their tanks. They only use power when they need to. Uh, this machine, the animal grower, and all of these machines so far that have to do with the wheat farm, the plant gatherer, and the sower, they do use power when they're idle. And these guys using power when they're idle is a very big problem, because it basically, it drains the whole system, because they're wasting power, right? It's just wasted. Like, right now, they're all using power. Like, uh, you can see, it's using power, but it's not doing anything because there's nothing for it to gather. It's the same thing with this guy down here. He's using power, but he's not doing anything because he doesn't have any open spaces to plant any seeds. So, it's just wasting power, and that's not good. That's not good. Um, so, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of trying to come up with a way to, 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 uh, to see if I can fix this. I'm not sure that I can right now. I am, I am, of course, getting way, way ahead of myself, I think. I don't even have good tools yet, which is what I plan on doing in this episode. But to start with, I just want to show you guys some things I've been thinking about. So I've got here an animal sewage machine, a sewage composter, and a plant fertilizer. Now with these three machines, I believe I can at least make the wheat grow faster. So what it does, uh, if I look back in here, the plant fertilizer, obviously, it, it does what it what it says, right? It fertilizes the plants, it makes them grow faster, it works with bone meal or an item called fertilizer. Now if I look at industrial foregoing, so this fertilizer stuff, right? Now this fertilizer comes from a sewage composter. Now the sewage composter, when provided with power and a bucket of sewage, will solidify into fertilizer. So, that's what this animal sewage machine is going to do it's going to extract animal sewage from these cows which are never going to go anywhere there's always going to be 20 adult cows in here uh, it's going to extract sewage from them put it into the composter the composter will turn it into into the uh, fertilizer and the fertilizer will pass it up to the plant fertilizer machine so i think that'll at least help the wheat grow faster what i don't know is all three of those machines cost power um so of course they're all going to be linked up to the same power source and i just don't think that it's it's enough to self-sustain i want to believe at some point i can make a big enough wheat field so that it'll offset the power like with various upgrades and stuff but that's just a matter of crunching the numbers so uh anyways i think real quick i'm going to set up those machines as best i can and uh and then we'll come check it out all right guys so i've got the machine set up as you can see there's some fertilizer going through so you can see it's doing what i want it to do so the animal sewage machine of course is uh constantly producing sewage from the animals up there dropping it down into here uh, and then once this gets a full bucket it turns it into uh fertilizer which pumps it up into the plant fertilizer now uh it's n still not great uh <laughs> Some of these machines have the same problem. This one, for instance, um, continually uses energy, even if it's idle. So, like, uh, why is it actually holding on to all this fertilizer? I guess it's because it doesn't have any power right now. There's no power in the system. Because <laughs> it doesn't store energy. I don't understand that. Like, like these ones that... Um, like this machine here, the animal grower. It still stores energy, but I have to turn it off to get it to do that. Uh, otherwise, it just constantly is trying to use energy. So that's that's not good. And that, and uh, 
that's going to be a problem. So yeah, as you can see, there must have been uh, a, a steak is in here now being cooked up. So we've got power. So this is starting to use the fertilizer, which is going to grow, start growing a whole bunch of wheat. And uh, yeah, it's kind of neat on one hand in that the adult cow getting killed by the crusher is almost like a, it almost works like a clock like that is kicks off the whole system so that will provide power for a few minutes so a bunch of wheat will get harvested and replanted and grown and and harvested again and uh and then a bunch of new cows will get bred up and will become baby cows and eventually they'll grow up and become more power for the system to kick it off all over again but eventually it still does come to a point where things come to a halt. The only thing that saves us really is the fact that uh, those four machines that I mentioned earlier do not use power when they are idle. So if that wasn't the case, none of this would work. So that's kind of concerning to me. The other thing that's interesting to note is that this machine actually does use power while it is idle. But if you see there, max 2T per tick. I don't know if that translates directly to RF. I think that it does. So two RF per tick, that's nothing, especially when I've got a bank of 50K. So um, this will slowly drain down, but I don't think it will be enough to completely empty out before we get a fresh stake in the uh, culinary generator to give it some fresh power, in which case it'll fill right back up. Uh, this is another one, same thing, but uh, it only uses 10 T per tick. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, that is kind of the same deal, uh, although it will drain a little quicker. So I think this is about as good as I can get this for now. Uh, eventually, I think what I'll, I'll do is probably just hook up a, uh, a <laughs> an energy cell once I've got some kind of crazy power generation going on, and, uh, and then I can actually get rid of this whole bit entirely. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, this thing is working pretty well for us, even though, uh, even though it's not operating as quickly as I'd like it. So today, uh, what I actually want to do for this episode is really get uh, situated with my tools. As you can see, I mentioned a, a while ago, I accidentally threw out my, my sword. I actually made another uh, obsidian axe, but uh, none of these tools are particularly great. And I really want to make some better ones. And I've been doing a bit of research. The thing is, in this pack, we do not have um, Tinker's leveling. So that means that what I make my tools out of is going to be really important. And I'm probably looking through all of the different um, modifiers and stuff that you can get. Um, I, I kind of... I, I, it makes me think, you know, I'm eventually going to have multiple sets of tools. So when I create a tool, I think, well, what do I want to do with it? And I need some mining tools, and that means I'm going to use primarily cobalt. Um, I've been thinking about this. Uh, you know, obviously the cobalt head mining speed of 12 is really good. 780 durability, that's pretty good. Uh, the lightweight also increases your mining speed, so that's pretty sweet. So I've been looking at this going, all right, well, I could make it purely out of cobalt, but I don't necessarily want to do that. So I was looking over here at this Ardite, and this handle, this modifier, 1.4, is pretty big deal. Uh, it does do minus 200 durability, but I've kind of crunched the numbers here. I, I, I Between the, doing an Ardite handle and an Ardite uh, extra piece, which would be the binding. And the reason for that is this Petra Armor. Uh, my tool loves stone. It literally wants to absorb it So for durability. So that means to me, if I have a pickaxe made with this, then when I go through and I'm mining down underneath, as I'm mining through stone, it actually has a chance of you know returning some durability. And since I... Probably I'm not going to be able to make this unbreakable. That's going to be a big deal to me. So I definitely want this Petra, Pet, Petramer, Petramer, Pet, that thing. And uh, uh, and I was trying to decide, well, do I want this 450 durability or do I want this modifier? And as it turns out, uh, if I make a head out of cobalt and then whichever piece I don't make out of Ardite, also out of cobalt, uh, the numbers are pretty close, but the handle, even with the minus 200 durability, comes out a little on top as far as durability goes because of this modifier. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make handles out of Ardite, and, or a handle out of Ardite, and the rest out of Cobalt, but I don't have any of that stuff, so we got to get into the Nether. Uh, that means I need to set up my inventory, and then we're going to head into the Nether, and I'm going to see about finding... Uh, actually lots of things there's lots of stuff in the nether that we need uh i need some uh uh 
drops of evil. I need uh, some blaze rods. I need a bunch of nether ores. Plus, for right now, the nether is going to be a pretty good place, I think, um, to gather some stuff. So let me get the, my inventory sorted out, and then we'll head out there. All right, so I'm sorted out now. I guess we'll go ahead and hop into the nether. I am a little nervous about this. Um, I've got some iron armor and a bow, but uh, none of it's enchanted or anything like that, so... We could have a bad time in here, but uh, let's see some cobalt right off the bat. Am I gonna die here? Probably. Let's go find some easier to get cobalt. Here's some ardite. And yeah, I do have an obsidian pickaxe, so I can uh, pick up this stuff, but man, uh, it is slow. <laughs> eh, grab some soul sand, why not? I'll probably need it eventually. About to make a clip talking about how this nether seems kind of boring and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot uh, different than the regular nether and then uh, I turn a corner and I see this thing I guess it's some kind of nether biome which is pretty awesome it looks like there's special nether trees possibly some nether flowers uh, nether bees stuff that I'm probably gonna need eventually unfortunately I don't really see an easy way to get down there. <laughs> uh, we're actually not very far from the portal. It's just over that way. So we'll be able to get back there pretty easily once I have flight. But uh, for now, um, that will have to stay a mystery. <laughs> Although chances are, if, if it is like a nether biome mod or something like that, we'll run into another one uh, as I'm hunting for things. As it is, I'm doing very well. As I said, um, yeah, the portal is just just through that little area right there. Uh, it's not very far at all, and I've already gotten you know quite a quite a decent amount of cobalt and ardite, a bunch of nether quartz, uh, soul sand and glowstone stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to stay in here. To be honest, the nether makes me nervous, but uh, I'd really like to find a fortress because I I definitely need some blaze stuff. What is this ash block? What can I do with it? It gives me a pile of ashes. Can I turn it back into a block? I can. Okay, I could probably chisel that. Maybe. I don't have my chisel. Actually, I do. Let's check it out. Um, Chisel. What can I do with this? Nothing. Alright. Can I do anything else with it? Cover crafting. I can make a cover out of it. Okay. Oh, very cool. So, can't really do anything with it. Not worth my time to uh, pick up right now. <laughs> um, Alright, I guess I will continue heading on in a thatwardly direction and uh, come back if we find anything interesting. Oh yeah, you know, I guess the reason that there's so much cobalt and ardite everywhere is that there aren't any other nether ores. I just realized that. <laughs> so uh, there's plenty of plenty of spots for them to spawn in so that's I guess that's good and bad It would be nice to have nether ores maybe but uh, it's not really necessary. I suppose Oh, well, that's fun. Apparently all kinds of fun stuff happens in the nether <laughs> uh, I mean I knew that uh, skeletons could spawn here, but I didn't think that uh, we'd get creepers and stuff I guess all mobs can spawn in here, which could be a problem for us. <laughs> Ooh, that's shiny. Draconium ore. Seems seems important. I wonder if I'm gonna regret. Probably. I probably am gonna regret doing that. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's see if I can not die today in lava. <laughs> uh, maybe this was a bad idea. This was a bad idea. I thought this was just a simple little waterfall. Well, apparently it goes way around. All right, well. All right, made it to the little biome. Let's see if it says anything. Ocean. Well, this isn't the ocean. Overgrown netherrack. That's cool. Can I harvest that? Nope. Maybe with silk touch I can. What's this? Flesh. Good lord. <laughs> Mountain of flesh. Uh, that's kind of gross. Oh, and it's squishy. 
like walks it's like walking on slime blocks almost <laughs> eye bulb can i can i have that i sure can i don't know what it's for but i'm taking it take another one sure why not Ooh, nice a fortress and what the heck is that thing uh Looks like some kind of crazy beehive, <laughs> which, which makes me think I don't want anything to do with it. Ow. Well, you don't... It definitely doesn't soften the fall like slime blocks do. Is this blood? Is this blood? This is blood, isn't it? I bet it's blood. I don't... Yeah. I'm gonna assume that's blood. <laughs> I want that cobalt. Hellbark wood. Take some of that. Gimme. Any saplings? Can I grow can I even grow this? Probably. Probably have to grow it on like netherrack or something. Uh any saplings. Mm. I'm either getting unlucky. All right, I'm going to assume that there are no saplings for that. And, uh, wow, this is actually, this is a really cool looking fortress <laughs> with all the stuff hanging down. Uh, it looks like it's a fairly big one too. So, all right, let me, oh, I don't have very many blocks. <laughs> I got, what am I talking about? I have plenty of netherrack. We'll pillar our way up here and hopefully not die immediately. And maybe we'll get lucky. And get a drop of evil, but mainly I, what I'm after right now is blaze, which it looks like there's a... No, that's just fire. That's just fire. Man, this fortress is pretty big, though. Ha! All right. With a skeleton. Ooh, blaze. Oh, this is not good. Oh, I'm on fire. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Holy cow. I am, uh, I am really not prepared for this. <laughs> All right, come on. I just I, I I need at least one, right? I don't even remember what I need it for at this point. Ow. Oh, I better not. Oh. Run away! Snipers, damn. Come over here. You know what? All right. Yes. All right, I got one. I don't remember why, but I got one. Give me another one. Run away. Quickly. Oh god! So much fire everywhere. I'm afraid to try to put it out. I'll hit a pigman. Oh man, only at one blaze rod. <laughs> From all of that. Then I can pick them off a little easier at range, maybe. I don't have a very good bow, though. Do so much damage. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> now let's see if I can survive this. You know what? I think. I think. Uh, I don't. I don't think we really need to come to the Nether right now. I think we've got plenty of stuff. Uh, from this trip, and we could probably just go ahead and head on home. I think that's a good idea. What do you guys think? Uh, we can come back for more blaze rods and stuff like that later. 
do I have slash home in this pack? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Success. Whew. All right. Well, that was fun. Let me uh, get sorted out and, uh, and then we'll uh, process some of this stuff. All right, smelted down our cobalt. Well, at least a tiny little bit of it because I want to go ahead and make the pickaxe first. And of course, that's not what I meant to do. Well, that's one way to get cobalt out of the machine. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pick the right stuff this time. And uh, there we go, get some cobalt out of there. Very nice. And while I'm here, we'll go ahead and make the, should have enough ingots, yep. Perfect. Go ahead and make the binding. And then we'll get that last ingot out of there. Because I don't want to make manulin just yet, which is cobalt and iridite uh, smelted together. So now I've smelted down the iridite so I can get the handle, which I need to go grab. All right, got our iridite here. I'll go ahead and put it into the tool rod there. And then, nice, swing over here, put it all together. What do we got? A cobalt pickaxe with pet armor, momentum, and lightweight. Um, old shift here, mining speed 12. Uh, not, you know, that's, that's pretty good, I suppose. Uh, attack 5.1, three modifiers, that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and grab this guy, and we can add mining speed on him with redstone. And we can add like fortune stuff with lapis. We can also add more durability if we want okay. to. Okay, so I've got my pickaxe made and now I think I wanna go ahead and craft up some other tools. I'm gonna to make another hammer um, and I think I'll make the hammer very similarly to how I made the uh, the pickaxe with, with pretty much just cobalt and some ardite. So let me do that real quick. So for a weapon, I've decided to go for just uh, a cleaver, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it takes two tough tool rods, so I've got one made from bone, which gives me fractured, which is increased damage, and a copper, which is the well-established, which gives me experience. Manulin for the large sword blade, because that's the best um, base damage uh, that I could see. Uh, it also gives me insatiable, which during combat I do more damage, but also consume more durability, so it's something to keep my eye on, I suppose. I've also got this flint large plate, which gives me crude too, which is where this uh, additional 10% damage versus unarmored goes. So it's a pretty decent sword. I'm sure that there's uh, better stuff that I could use, but uh, I like these things. They're 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 fairly large. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, that should do us a little bit better than this dinky vanilla iron sword for sure. Which is uh, what is that? Six attack damage, and this one does. 15.46 attack damage <laughs> so yeah a little bit better a little bit better all right so i've also crafted up myself some basic tools just a regular hatchet and a shovel just some good stuff cobalt iron and i think copper was the other thing uh yeah copper so that's some pretty cool i've also made this manulin shuriken now uh <laughs> i used only manulin i'm sure there's better ways to do it it only has uh 7.8 attack damage but i'm sure this is better than the bow I was using so these are pretty cool and I can rapid fire them a lot better than uh, than just a bow and arrow plus I can pick them up and it'll heal itself plus uh, I guess you know if I manage to lose them which I'm sure I will I can always repair it uh, in the table so that's pretty cool so uh, I've also crafted up these portable tank here and that's because I remembered what I needed that uh, um, thing for <laughs> plays rod <laughs> it's in here Right, so we need blaze rod and one of these ender pearls. Yeah, as you can see, I'm doing pretty good on ender pearls uh, here, and uh, I think I want to actually find a way to automate this a little bit better, so I can just start gathering a whole bunch of ender pearls because I uh, I want them. <laughs> so, um, okay, over here I need uh, blaze powder and one of these guys because I also oh right three obsidian. I can do this, nope, here, and then like that. Absorption hopper, awesome. Vacuums up items and XP orbs in a seven by seven by seven area. That is really important to us. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna use this portable tank because this thing is gonna be able to suck up the XP orbs that generate 
uh, from the cows being bred, which they do generate XP orbs, even though I'm not doing it. Look, you can see there's a bunch of them in there right now. So uh, if we run down here, I am pretty sure this will be able to pick them up through the floor as it works in a seven by seven by seven area. So if I just stick that right there, is that, is that doing bad things? Hold on. Grab my wrench here, my crescent hammer, and right click. Okay, you go away. And then I just need to configure this guy. There we go. Liquid XP in the thing. So down is going to be for liquid or fluid. And then we'll just plop the tank right there. So now this thing is going to be generating experience for us as well. So this farm does it all, man. <laughs> Uh, breeds your cows, kills them off for you, cooks some steak, grows some wheat, gives you some experience. Awesome. Don't forget the mob essence. Oh man, yeah, we're we're definitely doing uh, a bit better. That even though that's not doing a whole lot, that fertilizer is helping enough to almost double the rate. I would say that I was getting before, so that's pretty awesome. All right, so this is pretty sorted out about as well as I can get it right now. Um, you know, it's still not perfect, but it's working well enough that it uh, is at least able to kind of keep up with itself and produce me some steak. I got some tools that I'm happier with. Um, yeah, I think we're set up pretty good here. I think we're going to start wrapping things up before we go, though. Um, wanted to say, uh, Chris Hoffman, thank you very much for telling me about the endergenic generator. I think that sounds really interesting and complicated and over the top and complex and all of the things that I really like. <laughs> so I think that's a, that's something I'm going to go shoot for. Um, also though, I'm looking for more suggestions from you guys. I have been looking through this pack and have been realizing that there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of options for armor. Now, if I kind of, uh, look through JEI and just type in armor. I've looked through most of this. Some of this is absolutely insane. Um, like there's astral sorcery stuff. I'm not into that yet. Uh, draconic evolution. I'm not, I'm not into that yet. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I like industrial craft too. I don't know what that's for. There's a lot of different types of armor in here and, and none of it seems like super easily accessible except for this type of stuff. Basically the vanilla armor. And I really don't want to do vanilla diamond armor full-on enchants and stuff because this isn't vanilla minecraft but uh i'm having trouble coming up with a better solution because this dinky iron armor is not cutting it so if you guys got any suggestions for me definitely let me know down in the comments um but yeah i think uh i think that's it for this episode you guys so if you liked it go ahead and leave me a like uh leave me a comment down below let me know what you think of the stuff we have going on here if you got any answers to uh questions or generic suggestions things like that hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying the content i do have other stuff going on that you might enjoy and uh yeah i think that's it until next time you guys I'll see you later bye bye